just before we begin a time of praise before the Lord, I wanted to share a few thoughts with you. Here's what we're going to do, just really quick. I know you just sat down, but I want you to stand with me because we're going to take our place in the Lord right now. We're going to take our place in the Spirit. We're going to take our place with a prophetic spirit as we move into a time of intense praise before the Lord. As we offer ourselves to Him, Father, this is our moment with You. This is our time where we do purposely, intentionally, and with determination and deliberately, we occupy our place in You, in the heavenlies. We occupy our place in the Spirit. We put on spiritual garments today. We put on the empowerment. We put on all that you have given us that we might lift and offer and magnify and bless and glorify you that the kingdom might come and you might do awesome things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. John, you may be seated. John saw something and wrote it down. In the book of Revelation, this is what he said in Revelation 4.1. As I looked, I saw a door standing open in heaven. And the same, by the way, he must have had grandkids because that's the way it is. The door is standing open. The same voice I heard before spoke to me like a trumpet blast. The voice said, come up here and I will show you what must happen after this. The book of Revelation is an exciting book because it does virtually two things. First, it gives us a preview of eternity, that which is coming, uh, that which uh, must happen. It's futuristic. But there's another part of the book of Revelation that is just as amazing, and that is it gives us a picture of eternity. It gives us a picture of what is going on in the eternal realm or the spirit realm, which is now. It's not future. It's now. It's just invisible. You can't see it, but it's going on. It's in the now. And so John is not only seeing things in the future, he's also seeing what is happening in the spirit uh, by with things that are happening on the earth as well. And so uh, there are uh, a lot of things happening in the book of Revelation, but one of the things that it shows us, it shows us what happens when people start praising God. It shows us in the spirit what goes on. And today I want to share that with you just very quickly as we step into a time of intense and deliberate praise before the Lord. And there are a couple of things that happen. And I want to just give these to you uh, because we need to have a unseen perspective. Our perspective needs to be an eternal perspective. We need to understand that what we see is not everything, that there is much more going on that's in the unseen realm. And so it goes something like this. <clears throat> Our noise translates into praise. Revelation is a lot of noise going on. There's a lot of sounds, a lot of crazy things going on. But in all of this noise, uh, it is, there is a translation uh, into praise. Now, watch what happens. In the book of Revelation, you notice it doesn't take a crowd of people to generate praise. Uh, It's never about the number of people. It's always about the level of participation. You see, where two or three are gathered is just as powerful where there are 500. Because in God, it is the oneness. It's the allness. It's the togetherness. It's the unity. It's everyone together participating that generates this noise of praise. And also, I want you to notice in the book of Revelation, there's no one standing around telling people, you need to kick it up a notch. You need to do this. Come on. This is your time. They are people of passion. There is a passion that is flowing from them, and that is generating into praise. Now, just because you have participation and just because you have passion doesn't mean you have praise. You can have a lot of noise, but it's not praise. And here is a very interesting uh, uh, thing. Uh, here, is, here is what John saw. After this, he said, I saw a vast crowd, too great to count, from every nation and tribe and people and language, standing in front of the throne and before the Lamb. 
and they were clothed in white robes and they held palm branches in their hands and they were shouting with a great war, salvation comes from our God who sits on the throne and from the Lamb. And here it is in Revelation 8. Another angel came and stood at the altar. He held a cup made of gold full of a special perfume. And he was given much perfume so that he could mix it with the prayers of those who belong to God. And their prayers were put on the altar made of gold before the throne. Then the angel took the cup of gold. He filled it with fire from off the altar. Now, all of this, all of this praise and all this prayer is going forth. But this is what's happening as a result of that. And he took it and put fire with it from the altar and threw it down on the earth. And there was thunder and noise and lightning and the earth shook. So as all of this noise is being generated, it is translating into praise, but not all noise is praise. Notice what happened in the book of Mark. This is Mark 5. When they arrived at the home of the synagogue ruler, they entered a, they encountered a noisy uproar among the people. Well, this must be a good thing for they were all weeping and wailing. Well, and upon entering the home, Jesus said to them, Why all this grief and weeping? Don't you know the girl is not dead but merely asleep? Then everyone began to ridicule and make fun of him, but he threw them all outside. Now, notice what's happening. There's a lot of noise going on, and there's a, there's a, 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 the, the entire notice. It was all of them making all of this noise, but there's no praise coming out of that. Because what the enemy wants to do, these people are professional mourners. They come and they mourn. That's their job. Now, the enemy wants to turn you and I into a professional mourner where we mourn our condition, we mourn our situation, we mourn our loss, we mourn our past, we mourn our present, we mourn the situation. That is not what Jesus died for. He didn't call me to be a mourner because that's the wrong kind of noise. That noise does not turn into praise. So the noise that you hear in Revelation is a noise that translates into praise. But watch, then the praise translates into authority. Yeah. Do you know the way that you gain authority over something in the Spirit is to praise in it? If I want to pray, if I want to take authority over my mountain, I must praise in it. Because that gets me over it. Regardless, if I'm in the storm, if I'm praising in the storm, it gets me on top of the storm. It might not get me out of it at the moment, but it gets me on top of it. Whenever I am praising, I am exercising spiritual authority. And so when you and I in this room begin to praise Him, it translates into spiritual authority. We are taking authority. We are establishing authority. Jesus wanted to establish authority in that room. And the only way to do it, he had to get rid of all the white noise, all the background noise, all the contrary noise. He had to silence all of that, get it out of the room, and then there was authority to deal with that which was the issue in that room. So praise translates into authority. And you say, Pastor Buddy, what does authority look like in the Spirit? Well, it's not a badge. It's not a uniform. It's not an officer. It's not a statute. What does authority look like and sound like in the Spirit? Well, watch this. In 2 Chronicles 20... They were facing a multitude of enemy. They began to praise. And when they did, it says, when they began to sing and praise, 2 Chronicles 20, 22, the Lord threw the invading armies into panic. The praise established authority on the battlefield. Another translation says the Lord launched a surprise attack. Now, watch what happens. Here is what authority looks like in the spirit. You see, I'm opening the book of Revelation. I don't see any authority. Here it is right here. And Revelation 4, 5, and pulsing from the throne. Wow. Were blinding flashes of lightning, crashes of thunder and voices, and burning before the throne are seven blazing 
torches. Now that's Revelation 4, 5. Here it is in eleven nineteen. The same scenario. God's temple was opened in heaven and the Ark of the Covenant was clearly visible inside his temple. And there were blinding flashes of lightning, voices roaring, startling thunderclaps, a massive earthquake, and a great hailstorm. These are not just special effects. This is a demonstration of authority in the Spirit. So when we read in Revelation 8, as I read to you earlier, that the angel gathered all the praise, he gathered all the prayer, and he put it all together, and out of that came thunder and lightning and noises and shaking and quaking. So in the Spirit, when we are praising, there is an establishing of spiritual authority. There is God's authority being established wherever we are praising. So we are taking authority over things. So if I stand around with my hands in my pocket uh, and I'm tapping my foot and I'm wondering what's in the oven for lunch, I'm not establishing authority on anything or over anything. Because it's all in as they're praising, this thing begins to, there's a shaking and a quaking and thunder and noise and lightning, which is God's special effects, which is his authority in the spirit realm. Now, our noise translates to praise. Praise translates to authority. Our authority translates to power. I don't know if you've noticed it in Revelation 8. What did the angel do with all of this stuff? Anybody remember what I just read to you? It says he threw it down on the earth. Thank you. Because that's where we need it. We need it here. This is where the challenge is. This is where the wrestling is. This is where the struggle is. This is where the attack is. This is where the destruction is. It's down here. So when the authority is established, the power is then thrown down into the place where the authority has been established. So it's here. It's now. That means the healing is here. When the praise is going out and the authority is being established, Healing is here. Restoration is here. Wholeness is here. Jesus is here. His presence is here. Wow. The kingdom comes. The kingdom comes. You say, Pastor Buddy, what do I do? You do what everybody else does. We just participate. We just participate. You mean God wants me to do it? Yes, He does. Absolutely, He does. He delights in our praise. He inhabits our praise. He fills the room when we praise Him. He can work through those who praise Him. He's doing mighty things. Listen to what Jesus said. This was a great promise that He made us. As you and I get ready to begin to praise Him right now, watch this. Don't be afraid of missing out. This is Luke 12, 32. Don't be afraid of missing out. Don't let the enemy tell you there's nothing for you in all of this. That's what he says. You're my dearest friends. The Father wants to give you the very kingdom itself. Today, we say, Father, let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come. Let it reveal what it needs to reveal. Let it do what it needs to do as we simply praise you. Father, thank you. As you are standing with me in the presence of the Lord right now, just let's just stand before him. Just lift your hands up to him. The worship team is coming. They're going to lead us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, it is our honor, it's our privilege to be praisers right here, to magnify you, to lift you up. We delight in it, O oh God.